Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made these peppermint themed holiday snacks. I made a candy cane, a round peppermint candy, and a peppermint kiss. Some things you'll need for this tutorial are a crochet hook, I'm using a size E, a pair of scissors, some stitch markers or bobby pins, a yarn needle, some sewing pins, and you'll need some white and some red yarn. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver, which is a worsted weight. You can find the pattern for these candies in my Ravelry store, which will be linked in the description below. So I'm going to begin by making a magic circle with five stitches of single crochet using my white yarn. I'll wrap the yarn around my fingers twice, pull up a loop, and chain one, and that chain will count as my first stitch, so I'm going to mark that stitch with my bobby pin. Now into the magic circle, I'm going to single crochet four more times so that I have a total of five stitches. And now I'll close my magic circle. First I'm going to pull this open. Then to close the magic circle, I'm going to pull on the tail a little bit until I have one smaller loop and one larger loop. Then I'm going to pull on the smaller loop from the side closest to the tail until the other loop closes. Now I have one large loop, so I'm going to pull on the tail until this loop closes. And now the magic circle is closed. Now I'm going to leave this stitch open for now and I'm going to use some of my red yarn to do the next row. So instead of changing colors, I'm just going to work a new row onto all of these stitches. So I'm going to pull up a loop into the chain one that counted as the first stitch. Then chain one, and now that's going to be the first stitch of the row. So I'm going to move my bobby pin into that chain. And now I'll just single crochet into each of the next four stitches of white. Now I'm going to pull open my loop, and here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to continue using my white, and I'm going to work another row into those five red stitches that I just made. So single crochet into the chain one that counted as the first stitch. Mark that as the first stitch of the new row. And then single crochet into each of the four red stitches. Now I'll pull that loop open, and I'm going to repeat the same thing using the red yarn into those five white stitches. So single crochet into the first stitch.
mark that stitch with my bobby pin and then single crochet into the next four stitches. Then pull that loop open and continue using the white yarn. I'm just going to repeat that process again, switching back and forth between the white and the red yarn until I have as many stripes as I like. So I ended up doing 27 rows, and now I'm going to end the work. To do that, I'm going to simply cut off the red yarn. And then pull it through. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch using the white yarn. Then I'm going to cut off a long tail of the white. I'm going to sew in the red end first. And then I'll cut off my red yarn. Next, I'll use the white yarn to sew the bottom closed. And now I'm going to sew in the cane shape by gathering along the inside where I want the curve for the cane to go. So first I'm going to work the yarn up to where I want the cane to start. And then I'm going to fasten the yarn there by doing a little back stitch. Now I'm going to work the yarn on the inside but going through the stitching. I'm going to work the yarn until I get to the end.
And now I'm going to just pull on that yarn. And that's going to gather up the work into my cane shape. And I can just adjust that as I like it. And now we have a little cane shape. So to fasten that gathering in place, I'm going to do another back stitch. And now I'll sew in the end. And now I'll cut off the yarn. And now we have a little candy cane. Next, I'm going to make the peppermint candy. I'm going to begin with a magic circle with 12 stitches of double crochet, and I'm going to alternate colors between red and white for each stitch. I'm going to start with my white yarn, and I'm going to end with my red yarn. So first, I'm going to wrap my yarn around my fingers twice to make a double magic circle. Then I'm going to pull up a loop into the circle and chain one. And this is not going to count as the first stitch. I'm just going to double crochet for the first stitch. I found that if I did a chain two to begin the row, then it would look a lot slimmer than all of the other double crochets. Instead of chaining two, I'm just going to double crochet. And after this double crochet, I'm going to change colors. So I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop in the magic circle, and pull another loop through two of the loops on my hook, then I'm going to finish the stitch with a loop of the new color. So I'm going to pull a loop of my red yarn through the two loops that are still on my hook. And now I can continue to make the next double crochet using my red yarn. And I'm going to do the same thing, yarn over and pull up a loop in the magic circle, then pull another loop through two of the loops on my hook. And then instead of finishing the stitch with the red yarn, I'm going to change colors back to the white yarn and pull a loop through the two loops on my hook using my white yarn. And now I'm just going to repeat that process until I have six of each stitch. So yarn over, pull up a loop into the magic circle, pull through two, and change colors. Then yarn over, pull up a loop in the circle, pull through two, and change colors. And now I'm just going to go on until I have my 12 stripes. Okay, now I have my 12 stitches, six of each color, and you might notice that I did change colors at the end of the last stitch, just so that I can use that loop of the new color to finish the row by slip stitching to the first stitch. But first, I need to close the magic circle, the same way that I did before when I was making the candy cane. I'm going to pull a little bit on the tail until I have one bigger loop and one smaller loop, then I'll pull the smaller loop from the side closest to the tail until the bigger loop closes completely. And then I'll just pull on the tail until the other loop closes. Now to finish this piece, I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch of the row. Now I'm going to cut off both ends of the yarn. And I'm going to cut a longer tail of the white. And 
now I have my first little peppermint disc. Now I'm going to make one more of these, and then I'm going to sew both of them together. Now I've finished making both sides of my candy. Now I have two candy discs. For one of them, I cut a long red tail, and for the other, I cut a long white tail. So I'm going to stick these together at the back, and I'm going to leave out the red and the white tail, and I'm going to put all of the other tails to the inside so that they'll act as a sort of fiber fill in between the two candies. And then I'm going to sew them together using the red tail to sew the red stripes and the white tail to sew the white stripes. Now I'm going to put them together, matching up all of the stripes. And I'm going to make sure that the last stitch of the row on both of them isn't on the same stripe. Because you can see there's a little bit of a dip on that stitch. So if I offset them, that dip won't be as noticeable once I sew them together. So now I'm just going to pin these together. I'm going to pin them along the red stripes first, and then I'll sew the white stripes first. Then once I've sewn the white stripes, I'll remove the pins, and then I'll sew the red stripes. So I'm going to sew around each white stripe on both sides to join them together. Once I've sewn all the stripes, I'm just going to sew the rest of the end in. Then I'll remove the pins. And I'll sew the red stripes using the red tail. And once I've sewn all of the red stripes, I'll sew in the red tail. So here's what we have so far. Now an optional step is to make a little candy wrapper on each side. If you want, you can just leave it like this though. To make the candy wrapper, I'm going to pull up a loop of white into one of the white stripes. And I'll stick my hook through both sides. I'm gonna leave a long tail at the beginning of the work before I pull up a loop. and then chain three. Then into the third chain from the hook, I'm gonna double crochet 11 times. Now I'm going to chain one, and I'll cut off my yarn, now as you can see that chain that we worked into stretched out quite a bit, so in order to get that back to its normal state I'm going to pull on the long tail that we made until it closes up most of the way. Then. I'm going to wrap the tail around the base of that chain five times. And here is what that looks like.
Now I'm just going to sew in my ends. And then to make it look a little bit more like a candy wrapper, I just like to kind of fold it up a little bit so that it has a more pleated, crinkled look. And now I'm just going to do the same thing on the opposite white stripe. Next, I'll make the peppermint kiss. Using my white yarn, I'm going to begin by making a slip knot. And then I'll chain two. And now into the second chain from the hook, I'm going to single crochet using white and change colors to red. So into that second chain, I'm going to pull up a loop. And then instead of finishing the stitch with a loop of white, I'm going to finish that stitch with a loop of the new color, which is red. And then I'm going to mark that stitch as the first stitch of the row. Now I'm going to do the same thing using my red yarn into the same stitch. I'm going to single crochet using red and then change colors to white. So I'll pull up a loop into the same chain. Then instead of finishing that stitch with red, I'll finish that stitch with a loop of the new color, which is white. Now I have a white stitch and a red stitch. So now I'm gonna repeat that one more time so that I have four stitches. So I'll single crochet again using white and then change colors to red. and then single crochet one using red and change colors to white. Now I have four stitches in the row, alternating between white and red. And now in my next row, I'm going to increase every stitch of the row. And I'm going to do the same thing, alternating between white and red. So into the first stitch, I'm going to single crochet and then change colors to red. So pull up a loop, change colors, and then into that same stitch, I'm going to work a red stitch and change colors back to white so that I can increase that first stitch. So pull up a loop using red into the same stitch and finish that stitch with a loop of the new color, which is white. And now into my first stitch, I have one white and one red stitch. I'm going to go ahead and mark that white stitch as the first stitch of the next row. Now I'm going to do that into every single stitch of the row. So I'm going to single crochet one using white and one using red into each of the four stitches. So the next stitch is this red one. So pull up a loop in that stitch, change colors to red, and then pull up a loop of red in that same stitch, and change colors to white. 
Now I'll do the same thing into the next stitch, this white stitch, pull up a loop using white, change colors to red, and then single crochet again into the same stitch using red and change colors to white. Now into the last stitch, single crochet one using white and change colors to red. And then for the last stitch, single crochet again into the same stitch using red and change colors to white. So now I have eight stitches in the row, alternating each stitch between white and red. Into the next row, I'm gonna increase every second stitch. This time I'm gonna make two red stitches for each increase. So first single crochet into the first stitch of the row using white, and then change colors to red. I'm going to mark that as the first stitch of the next row. And now into the next stitch, I'm going to single crochet two using red. So I'll single crochet into that stitch. And this time I won't need to change colors since the next stitch will also be red. And now I'll single crochet one more time into the same stitch using red, and this time I will change colors back to white. Now I'm going to repeat that across the whole row. I'll single crochet one into the next stitch using white, and then into the second stitch I'll single crochet two using red. So single crochet one into the next stitch and change colors to red, then single crochet two into the next stitch using red. So there's my first single crochet using red. I haven't changed colors, so I can make one more red stitch into the same stitch. So pull up a loop, and this time I will change colors back to white. So I'm gonna continue to repeat that across the rest of the row. And here is what we have so far. In the next row, I'll increase every third stitch of the row, and in this row, I'm going to once again alternate between white and red for each stitch. So single crochet into the first stitch using white, and then change colors to red. I'm going to mark that as the first stitch of the row. Then single crochet using red into the next stitch. Change colors back to white. And now on the third stitch, I'm going to increase. So in that stitch, I'll single crochet one using white and then one using red. So single crochet using white, change colors back to red. And then into the same stitch, single crochet one using red and change colors back to white. And that is what it should look like. So I'm going to repeat that process across the entire row. So into the next stitch, single crochet one using white and change colors back to red. Next stitch, single crochet one using red, change colors back to white. And then into the third stitch, single crochet two times, once using white and once using red. So single crochet into that stitch using white, change colors to red, and then single crochet into the same stitch using red. Then change colors back to white. Now I'm going to repeat that across the entire row. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to do one more row. In this row, I'm going to just single crochet into each stitch without any more increases and I'm going to continue to alternate the colors between white and red. So into the first stitch, single crochet one using white and change colors back to red. Mark that as the first stitch. Then single crochet one using red and change colors back to white. Single crochet one using white, change colors back to red. Single crochet one using red, change colors back to white. And continue that pattern through the whole row.
Now I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to end the work. I'll cut off my yarn. Then I'm going to pull the tail to the back of the work. Now I'm going to put all of the tails inside of the kiss shape so that they can act as fiber fill. I'm going to need a little bit more fill than that, so I'm just going to add a few of the tails from the other projects that I've been working on so that I can stuff the peppermint kiss completely. Now I just need to make the bottom, so I'm going to set this aside for now, and then I'll make the bottom next. To make the bottom, I'm just going to use the exact same method that I used to make the peppermint candy a moment ago, but this time I'm going to make 16 stitches in total instead of just 12, so that I can have 8 stripes of each color. So I'm just going to double crochet 16 into my magic circle, changing colors after each stitch. So now I have eight of each color, so I'm going to close the magic circle. And I'll cut off a long tail of each color. Next, I'm going to match up the stripes of the top and the bottom of the kiss and pin it in place. And then I'll use the white tail to sew the white stripes together and use the red tail to sew the red stripes together. And now all my peppermint snacks are finished. I think these came out so cute. Let me know which one was your favorite in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, press the like button and share it on social media. And if you want to support the channel, you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash fairyrings. You can find a link to my Patreon in the video description, or you can leave a super thanks on the video right here on YouTube. You can also follow me, or tag me to show me what you're working on on Instagram, at LizFairy. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. I think these little peppermint snacks would make for really cute tree ornaments. Any ideas for other ornaments I could make? Let me know your suggestions down in the comments section, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!